Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here today. Um, we have a presentation we'd like to give you on the Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Health to provide you an update on activities we've been working on, and I'll introduce you to my colleagues within the School of Dentistry and Oral Health. Uh, but before we get into the agenda, I wanted to open up the welcoming session and ask Dr. Michael McManus, who's a, a Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, to come up and say a few words with y'all. So, Dr. McManus. Thank you very much. I want to let you know that uh, all of us here at ATSU are delighted that, that you could be here this evening. Uh, President Phelps uh, would have loved to be here, but he had a prior commitment out in San Diego, and he, he tried to convince us that it was tough duty to be out there in San Diego, but nevertheless, uh, I know he would want to, want to be here, and um, I just want to convey to you how excited we are about this project and about your participation. Or, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, like what you hear today from, from uh, Dean Halliday, and we'll share some of our enthusiasm for, wh for what's about to happen here in Kirksville and across Missouri with, uh, with this new dental school. It's really once in a lifetime kind of opportunity to be part of a project like this. And uh, we're excited and uh, we're hopeful that uh, you all will choose to be part of this as some of our adjunct faculty. And who knows if some of you want to take early retirement from your practice and come over here, we could, we could probably work out a deal as well. So in any case, I want to thank you very much. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, I know many of you, but I don't know all of you, looking forward to making your acquaintance and um, thank you again for coming to Kirksville. All right, thanks Michael. Okay, let's go. We have what we've done. We have some uh, PowerPoints today, and we have a lot of information up there. So I'm going to stand off to the side a bit, so you can all uh, look at the slides while you listen to me go through them as well. Uh, just real quickly, uh, my name is Chris Halliday. I think I've met maybe half of you, a little bit more than half of you, but I'm Chris Halliday. I'm the dean of the dental school, and I've been out here in Kirksville since about the last day of June. Uh, it's been great. I mean, the community's been very welcoming and very open, so thanks very much. I've met some of you socially around town, some of you have been out to your practices and your office buildings, so thanks very much. I've enjoyed meeting each of you, and the ones I haven't met yet, I'd really like to have a chance to talk with you tonight. Uh, let's, I'm going to give you a quick update. We're going to kind of tag team this presentation. Uh, but the School of Dentistry and Oral Health, um, we will be graduating dentists or oral health care providers who will be caring, uh, not only about their individual patients, but their communities. They're gonna be technologically uh, adept dentists, and they're gonna be community leaders, both from the point of view of healthcare providers as well as educational leaders. We wanna make sure that the folks who graduate are actively involved in their community, and I, I can tell you right now that Kirksville is probably the most service-oriented community I've ever lived in, and I've lived in quite a few. So we want to make sure that we graduate dentists that emulate the qualities of the service that people in this community have demonstrated. Uh, of course, uh, as you well know, AT Still University emphasizes uh, meeting the needs of underserved population groups. So we want to make sure that we mirror that in the graduates from the school. And we want, to, we want to make sure that our graduates are lifelong leaders in education. So education, once again, not only for the individual patients, but education within their communities. And ideally, we'd like to make sure that our graduates, uh, graduates are involved in dental education across the country. Okay, and also uh, the school produced graduates who have a very strong foundation in critical inquiry. We want to make sure uh, you're, you're going to hear a little bit from some of my colleagues here this evening about the curriculum. We want, we want to make sure that our students are actively involved in the curriculum. They, uh, they're not there just to listen to a lecture. They're there to participate in the lectures. They're there to uh, be interactive with their classmates and the faculty at the school. So we want to make sure that we're producing graduates who have a strong knowledge of all matters related to oral health and overall health. 
Uh, we want to make sure that we graduate students that have an appreciation of evidence-based dentistry. Uh, where there will be a research component within the training here at the school for some of our students. Uh, very importantly, we want to make sure that we're graduating dentists that are uh, culturally sensitive, culturally fluent, and culturally competent. Uh, we have a very diverse population group within this country and every year it gets more and more diverse. So we want to make sure we're graduating dentists that will take into the needs, the, the cultural and uh, community needs of the entire patient base they'll be working with in the future. Of course, uh, like dentistry has always been, we're going to make sure that uh, we produce graduates who have a strong knowledge and strong application of prevention uh, and also to, um, to tag on and join a, a priority for this university. We want to make sure this is an interprofessional learning experience for our students. Uh, we'll have some slides coming up showing the new building, but what I'd like to do is make sure that our dental students are working alongside the medical students at Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, and we want to make sure that we foster that interprofessional approach towards delivery of health care. Uh, we're also going to strive to promote the delivery of optimal patient care, and that's the goal, I believe, of all of us in the room as oral health care providers. And we're going to foster the transfer of newly acquired knowledge, so we're going to make sure we have cutting-edge knowledge that we're imparting upon our students. Uh, and we're going to make sure that our students have the knowledge, skills, abilities, and technology to benefit not only the individual patient, but once again the community as well as the entire dental profession. Uh, you'll hear a little bit more from my colleagues about the curriculum and the training with students, but we want to make sure that we're interweaving the qualities of compassion, altruism, community focus, uh, educational components and oral health competencies, ethics, integrity, leadership, service, professionalism, and excellence. And um, you know, I think any of us that have been reading either the ADA journal or the American Dental Education journals or the American College of Dentist journals, you'll recognize just about all of these qualities and traits are factors and traits that the profession is emphasizing. Uh, when I was at my previous job in Washington, D.C., I worked quite a bit with the American College of Dentistry on the ethics issue, and they're, they're one of the biggest uh, motivators behind the, the uh, drive to introduce ethics into dental education. But between the American Dental Association, the American Dental Education Association, the American College of Dentistry, state and local dental societies, I believe you know, we've covered many, many of the uh, priorities. Okay, what I'm going to do also, I'll give you a little bit of an update uh, for people. So I want to let you know who we have on staff and who we have working here in Kirksville as well as out in other communities assisting us. Um, give you a little bit of an update on students, facilities, the curriculum, and opportunities for those of you here in the room. And I'll, I'll cover a few of these. I'm going to pass the baton over to Dr. Kaz and ask her to share, and then we'll pass it over to uh, you know, Dr. Uh, uh, Crutchfield as well as Dr. Dewan. Okay, um, this, who's here uh, on a full-time basis right now? Uh, I'm the dean of the dental school, and I came here after almost 25 years with the U.S. Public Health Service. So I spent uh, most of my time in the public health service with the Indian Health Service. Uh, about half of my time with the Indian Health Service is spent out in Alaska, New Mexico, and Arizona, and then Rockville, Maryland at IHS headquarters. And then on the last year and a half, I was in public health service. I was in the office of the Surgeon General in Washington, D.C. Um, Dr. Liz Kaz, sitting up front, is with us tonight. She's our Associate Dean for Education and Assessment. Dr. Dale Dewan up here. Dale's our Director of Integrated Human Sciences. So Dale and Liz have been working extensively on the curriculum for the school, so they may be able to give you some updates on the curriculum. And then Allison Crutchfield here. Allison is uh, currently in Mesa, Arizona, but she'll be moving here during calendar year 2013, and she's our Director of the Preclinical Education and Simulation Clinic. And when we get to the design of the uh, building, you'll see a large section of the building is devoted towards a simulation clinic. And for you know, people of our dental generation, what I call analogous to our old sophomore lab, a lot of the work that we used to do in sophomore lab. Uh, this is um, what the org chart will look like once the school is fully up and running uh, with all the positions filled and any future expansions taken into account. So you can see it's going to be a comprehensive, comprehensive program. You know, right now, there I am, there's Liz, 
There's Allison and Dale. Where are you? There you are. There you are. I'm at the bottom. Okay. Um, just to give you an update, we're working through the American Dental Education Association on the application process. So uh, students, or I should say applicants, have been looking through the ADEA website for uh, status on the application process for this as well as with other schools. And it, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, ADSYS, but it's basically the clearinghouse for dental school applications. Um, secondary applications, uh, we're in discussions internally here right now, but we're at the point, I think, that we're going to have some information very soon on submission of secondary applications for this school. So we've been working with Dr. McManus in the President's office on, uh, we're going to get some information put together on that. I'll, I'll tell you right now, we have over 600 individuals have filled out a, a preliminary application for this school. As far as the uh, application selection criteria, well, I think you all realize that uh, all dental schools are looking for students who have a strong background in the sciences, both the human sciences as well as physical sciences. Uh, we're we're going to follow suit on that, but in addition, we're going to have a strong emphasis on making sure that we hopefully select applicants who have a, a strong proven history of service, whether it's service to their community, service to uh, the nation, whatever it may be. But we're very much just like Kirksville, once again, we're very much interested in attracting students who have a proven history of service. Uh, like I said, we have over 600 applications, uh, that preliminary applications been submitted. I haven't checked in the last week or so, but last time I did check, I believe it was in the neighborhood of 670 preliminary applications that have been submitted. Um, and what we anticipate is with the secondary applications, once we get the information out, we're going to probably, with approval from the President's office, we'll be looking at a mid-March 2013 deadline for the submission of the secondary applications. Um, this is what the building's going to look like. You've, when you pulled up, you all saw the steel structure outside, and I'm going to give complete credit for this up to date for Dr. McMahon as he has uh, been overseeing this project, and I know he puts in a tremendous amount of time. But this will be our, we're calling it, not officially, but this within our group here we call it IPEDS. So that's our Interprofessional Education and Dental School Building. It's not just the dental school building because we want to make sure folks realize that Kirksville College Osteopathic Medicine will have students attending lectures and uh, dealing with their academic progress within that building as well. So once again, we'll have dental students and the medical students working alongside each other in the same building. Uh, this is a 61,000 square foot building. Um, last week, you know, we get updates weekly from the builders, and by all accounts, it seems at this point in time, you know, of course, weather could be a factor or whatever, but it seems at this point in time that the uh, building may be ready for delivery by the end of April of 2013. So Dr. McManus and I meet weekly with the architects and the builders, and we get weekly updates on that. This point, once again, looks like we're looking at late April for a delivery day. It's going to be a beautiful building. Um, here's kind of an artist rendering of it overhead. So, oops, let me go back to that here. Um, so right now, of course, this is the building, the steel structure in this area here. At one point, this was all parking lots, so this will be redeveloped land around there. It's going to be a very green approach. Um, this building is going to be a very much environmentally friendly building, and I know that was a priority for the university. So Dr. McManus has been working, once again, with the architects and the builder to make sure that this is a, Michael, is the correct term, leads approved? Leads approved. We hope to qualify for lead silver rating. So that's a very prestigious four, rating. Four level of leads. Leads is an acronym. I, I forget what the exact details are. But it's a measure of sustainability. And as far as we know, there is no other leads building in northern Missouri. It'd be the, probably the first one. Truman doesn't have one. So it's going to be really cool. Yep. It's going to be a beautiful building. And the grounds around it will be beautiful as well. This is um, this is the main uh, the, the ground floor of the building. So I told I talked to you earlier about the simulation lab where Dr. Crutchfield will be uh, working with students. So this entire west side of the building there that'll be a simulation lab. You can't really see it very well on this overhead, but uh, or on this slide screen. But there's individual workstations there. Uh, we have the capability to equip that eventually for up to 65 students, about 65 workstations. Initially, we'll have in the 
oh, 40 to 45 range for the number of stations that are fully equipped. Um, this will be the radiology over there, radiology area, so that's where we receive a lot of their training. Um, throughout the building, and I'll show the upper floor as well, but throughout the building there are classrooms, there are individual breakout study rooms. And keep in mind, once again, that the medical students will be using some of these spaces in the building as well. Uh, this is the upper floor. So there's um, administrative buildings over on this side, reception area. It's going to be a really beautiful curved staircase coming upstairs. Kind of a theater type of uh, lecture room there. Once again, all sorts of different examination rooms for the medical students. Uh, there, and there's different uh, classrooms here. There's rooms that have partitions that can be opened up so you can keep it either as two classrooms or two lecture rooms or you get to open it up to be one large room. What, what's pretty cool about this too, and you can, once again, you can't see it on this. Uh, if you looked at the plans, you see it a lot more clear, clearly, but the chairs and desks are arranged such to facilitate interaction between the students. So it's not like the old days where we all sat alphabetically in rows with our backs to the people behind us. This will allow for more face-to-face -face interaction from the students because as I told you early, earlier, we want to make sure that we're developing students that are interactive, have a good command of the knowledge, interact with their classmates as well as their instructors. Uh, this is a picture that was taken just a few days ago. So just to orient you, this is kind of the western side of the building. The sim lab will be all down through this area, administrative offices up here. And then uh, we're also in a process right now looking at several possible sites in St. Louis. Uh, you'll hear a little bit more about it, but the students will do their first year, two years, a didactic portion of their training here in Kirksville. Third year, the students will all move to the St. Louis area. And then we're, we're uh, partnering with community health centers within St. Louis, and we're looking at possible sites to build a clinic. So we'll be uh, building a, a substantial clinic in St. Louis for the students to have their third year. And then the fourth year, some of the students will stay in St. Louis area, and the rest of their class will be dispersed around the state at other community health centers. And a local community health center here, Andy Grimshop, has indicated interest in having students work in their clinics too. I'm not sure the exact number he's thinking, but Andy's interested in partnering with us. So I'm going to uh, turn this over to Dr. Kaz, and she'll update you on the status of the curriculum. This might be a good time to get some cheesecake. We have them at this point. Or not. Oops. Is that a walk off? Try not to make too much rustling noise here. Well, if you were following Chris when he made his uh, first introduction about the curriculum and what we're trying to actually um, grow, if you will, in terms of a dental student, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And um, one of the things that we really look at is not only just the facility that this person has to grow and develop out of, but what what is the framework or the structure that we've put together to make sure that we get that product. And one of the, oops, excuse me, wrong direction here. Um, it, in developing the curriculum, uh, we are working uh, through our, our college, our sister college down in Arizona, using many of the elements of their framework. And that is really um, developed from the genesis of the American Dental Education Association competencies for the new general dentist. And that was developed back in 2008. And from that document, there were basically six domains that we need to kind of encompass if we're going to have a well-rounded general dentist. And what we've done is really develop the whole curriculum around those domains and those competencies. Right now, we have 14 graduate competencies that fall in the area of critical thinking, patient care, um, communications, interpersonal communications and skills, health promotion, and practice management. So from all of those aspects, our curriculum has been developed. I'm only going to really uh, 
touch on these very uh, briefly because my esteemed colleagues here are going to go into a whole lot more detail and I have the pleasure of introducing them and all the work that they've been putting uh, together for our first group of students coming in. Um, you know, they say that developing a dental school is very similar to the gestational period of an elephant. Do you know how long that takes? <laughs> 22 months, and I don't know, but I think we're going to be right on track with that. So um, to get that all up and going, what we've tried to do is use an integrative theme. As you noticed when we were looking at even the facility, the way that the classrooms are going to be set up will facilitate integration so that people are talking to each other and not just looking at the talking head at the front of the stage. Um, the other thing is the way that we're going to develop the material itself is going to be more problem-based, case-based, those types of situations, small groups, and I'm not going to steal your thunder there, Dale. Um, but <laughs> ideally, <laughs> but ideally it will be um, an opportunity for the students to actually learn from each other and work with each other through that. I'm going to show you another slide here that might be a little frightening if you, as you look at it because the print is going to be very small, but all of you should have uh, received a folder when you came in. And uh, that information is in this folder so that if you would want to look at it more specifically, um, it is in there. But we do use a modular system. If you recall, maybe when you went to dental school, you took a class and you followed that class through maybe two, three days a week for 18 to 20 some weeks. We're going to change that up a bit. We're going to immerse the students in modules and that is what they focus on for a week, maybe two weeks. Maybe that particular module because of the content material that has to be imparted may only be two days, but um, it will look very different. So that is what a schedule looks like for the future student here. You can see we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and all of the dates for the semester and the two semesters along the side. And as we go through, as you look carefully at that, you're going to see that there's going to be different modules as they go through this process. But the really big things is that, you know, they've got like winter break and they have semester break. <laughs> Gotta have those breaks in there, otherwise it gets a little overwhelming. So with that, I would like to kind of take you to that next step, which is Dr. Dewan. He is our director of the integrated, I'm going to say this, I'm health, but it's human sciences. <laughs> and he's going to talk about the basic science curriculum that we're going to be offering our first year students. So Dale. on the desktop, so let's see. How do I? Okay. Desktop? Yeah, when I get just down, it should be right, right at the bottom there. That one there, yep. Well, nice to see you there. Nice to see you here this evening. I appreciate that, and and I'm probably the least important person for you to listen to. So uh, I won't give you an Oscar speech where we'll be here for 20 minutes or 25 minutes past the two or three minutes I'm supposed to be talking to you. But uh, uh, as director of integrated human sciences, we're we're I'm responsible for developing the. Uh, um, the basic human science curriculum gets students ready for, for uh, uh, applying all of their the, the dental skills and also the medical skills that they'll need. And uh, what we're working with, I, most of this slide Liz has already talked to you about, but, but one of the things we really want to uh, work with for them is, is to get a, a, a relatively even knowledge base where they're starting because one of the things that we found um, at the sister school is many of the students are coming in 
with some of their requisite knowledge uh, not being very good and they're spending time trying to learn that rather than delving into the concepts we're trying to teach. So one of the things that we'll be looking at doing is giving them a, uh, a assessment, self-assessment test. They can determine where they are and where they need to brush up on us as they come in to, uh, to take on the, um, the, the human science courses, first part of their, their dental school. And uh, so we want them on a relatively even base and then we'll put them into the immersion courses. The, uh, uh, you, the thing about an immersion course and many people think, well, you know, that's really a tough way to go and people won't remember. But I don't know about you, but I think I remember when I was in dental school, there was a time when we had 11 courses. And I don't even, I couldn't even tell you what I learned in any of those courses and wouldn't remember it. So some of the, the questions about whether you, you know, learn by assimilation, by spreading out the courses versus an immersion, I think it, it, it follows very much with how, um, uh, you know, what your learning style is and then what you're used to doing. And having been associated with ASDO for, for uh, a few years now and seeing the immersion course and talking with some of the students, it's interesting because in the second year they start taking two or three or four courses where they might be doing them simultaneously and they start really crying about having to, to have these multiple courses they're studying for. So as somebody once put it, students will rise to the occasion, kicking and screaming, but they will rise to the occasion. And so we find that by providing these immersion courses we can really get them to concentrate. The weakness of maybe not remembering might be taken care of by one of our big themes that we're trying to work from and that is it's this interweaving of information, not letting them forget the material. If they start off with molecular cell biology, learning cellular principles, cell intercellular communication, molecular communications, they apply it when they get into their histology and the embryology course. Where they'll apply it as they go into each of their other courses and progress. So this integrative theme is, is one of the big parts. And what we'll, what we'll be looking to do is give them their their core, their foundation, their base science courses, your genetics, histology, embryology, anatomy, physiology. But we'll do it on a more simplified form where we're presenting the base concepts they need to use. And then we'll go to the systems courses and we'll tie in the histology, the anatomy, the embryology. And we're gonna, we're gonna bring in a medical and dental theme to go along with that. And the big part of it is uh, the boards, all of science. One of the things that, that's, that's going on in dentistry and medicine is, is the fact that, um, that we really need to be able to, from, from day one, start bringing in the concept of thinking like a clinician, not just as an academician, and then trying to convert them into thinking like a clinician. So we want to get into our systems courses, provide some case base components and then have them apply that basic material and learn how to use it as they're looking at the pathologies and the different diseases and then tie it into how you'd practice with, you know, use it in practicing dentistry. These are our prerequisites and this is what we'll base that, uh, that requisite knowledge base from. Uh, obviously, if we don't have anatomy on there, it's pretty hard to, to uh, expect them to know all the uh, uh, initial components they might need to know with anatomy. But we certainly uh, can expect them to understand some of the physiological principles based on physics, um, some of the biochemical principles, and hopefully not have to start from scratch one with biochemistry, for example. And then this is just basically a list of, of topics. I'm not, we, we, we're not necessarily calling them courses per se, but this is the organization of the topics that we have that we're going to try and work with. The core topics are your foundations, your molecular cell biology, um, anatomy, histology, and embryology, those courses. And then we would bring in the systems and we would take those core topics and start tying those in and we'd bring in um, uh, some of the principles of medicine, some of the, the, the principles of uh, topics down in the lower, uh, in, on your right side, 
oral medicine, behavioral science, ethics, professionalism, public health, and one of the big ones that's going on now is interprofessional uh, education. And uh, uh, I think we all have experienced the fact that uh, medical, medic medicine and dentistry don't always communicate very well. And, uh, and, and we, we're gonna be trying to break down some of those barriers. And it's a big, it's a big thing going on in education right now to try and provide that, uh, that interplay between the two programs. And then as we develop our systems where we, where we sometimes where we lack is the integrative systems and that we, we want to present about two weeks of taking in whole body system and tying in all of the systems, all the pathologies, medic, medicine and dentistry that, that go into the whole body system and try and bring it. So again, the, the, the real important thing and the thing we're trying to do is continually interweave this material to a point where they'll have a good handle on it. We try to do this in, in uh, basically six to eight months. And we want them to be ready to take their first year boards, or their, their, their first part of their boards, instead of at the end of the second year, take them at the first year. And the advantage that we've seen that occurs um, at school in Arizona is that now these students have that out of the way and they spend three good years learning how to be dentists and applying and integrating some of these components. And uh, now to, uh, to make my speech to you relevant, <clears throat> anybody who has and would like to share any correlations of dentistry, you know, that, that might fit into any of the basic sciences and actually could go to any of the preclinical, any of the clinical situations, uh, that you should find a form like this in your packet. Um, and uh, following that, if you have any cases that you've run across that are of uh, pretty interesting or unique situations and would like to present them for us to, to potentially use and integrate into our curriculum, we'd love it and uh, we'll, we'll welcome it. And if any of you have any, any particular knowledge in, in the uh, human sciences and, and would like to speak to us further, that would be a, a great thing also. That's all I really have to say and now we'll turn this over to the to the speaker of the uh, of the evening. Field, and I'll be the director of the simulation clinic here and I absolutely love the simulation clinic I hope to get everyone really excited about getting involved here I am an ATSU graduate so I was in the third graduating class from the Arizona School of Dentistry and Oral Health and among other things I've been working in the sim clinic ever since I graduated and I'm really excited to be able to bring the dental program to Kirksville and I'm hoping to give you guys a glance tonight into some of the ways you'll be able to get involved here in Kirksville. Okay, so a typical day in the sim clinic to start with. You usually will have a, a small lecture in the morning and maybe a mix of group demonstrations throughout the day. Um, you spend most of the day, however, working one-on-one -on -one with the students. Pretty much each instructor will be responsible for helping about 8 to 12 students and it's really up to you. Kind of evaluate your teaching styles, tailor your approach to the different students, demonstrate techniques and there's a lot of leeway for what you can be doing throughout the day so that the students are able to become competent in the different dental disciplines. And you'll notice that as you work with the D1s, 
you know, it's a lot more teaching intensive. So I liken it to teaching kind of A, B, C when you're already really fluent in something. So it gives you a really good opportunity to start from the ground up and just be a positive influence to these students and really teach them things the right way from the beginning. And then you'll notice students become a lot more independent, a lot more confident, confident as the years go by. And by the end of their D2 year, it's really very rewarding to see everything that you've been a very instrumental part of helping to achieve. So what I'd like to do in about 15 minutes is to kind of take you through what a typical year would be in the Sim Clinic. And as mentioned before, we do have the module system, so pretty much we have one class and you're doing that course for anywhere from one to about 14 weeks. So if you're doing operative, you're pretty much doing operative and let me take you through that right now. So the simulation clinic courses really begin as the integrated human sciences kind of wind down, which is the spring of the D1 year. And we start with Operative 1, which is obviously a really major class. So this is four days a week for about 13 weeks. And you teach the students pretty much everything, starting with a class one, a occlusal amalgam preparation. And then we work up to a lot more complex procedures. Um, cusp buildups, pin placement, things like that. So it's it's really a pretty pretty great class. Um, I have a bunch of pictures to share with you tonight. So just some of the instruments and burrs that we're currently using. Different bonding agents, um, the compositite sectional matrix system we're teaching for composites. We're currently using premise, cur. We try to pick a lot of these materials based on the evidence and the research. So. They're always subject to change as time goes by. As, as previously mentioned, we're also trying to do more in terms of case-based learning. And so what we've done for the operative courses is create scenarios. So we don't really just assign a tooth to the student and have them fill number 30, but rather they read through the patient's medical history, radiographic and clinical findings, and they have to design the treatment plan themselves. Now there are correct answers, they can't just do anything, but it's up to them to arrive at the correct treatment and the correct procedure for that day. Okay, so something else I wanted to share with everyone tonight is one of what I consider to be um, a more rewarding part of working in education and that's being able to influence the students outside of the classroom and as previously stated ATSU has a huge community service driven model and we have a whole um, course dentistry in the community where we encourage the students to get involved with outside people pretty much everyone outside of the classroom one of these events is the as a pre dental day where we have um, several, I think there are about 80, 80 attendees this year from ASU and University of Arizona and they're able to come into the sim lab and just kind of play with the handpiece and get exposed to dentistry that day. About 40 of the second and third year students came up to help. You'll see them in those pictures on the left and then I supervised the event for that day. So kind of throughout the presentation I'm just going to share with you a couple other events where you would be able to get involved as a faculty supervisor. Then we go into the summer break, which is a break for the faculty per se, but not really for the students. That's when they have some time assigned for independent board study, and then they'll take part one, excuse me, of their boards. And then we get into D2 year. So D2 year is the bulk of the coursework for the simulation clinic. Most of the time spent in sim clinic will be with the second year students, so get to know them very well. And the main course that runs throughout the fall is fixed prosthodontics. So currently it's about a 10 week class. We have some other small modules in between, but fixed pros is pretty much crown and bridge and so let me take you through a few of the procedures we're currently teaching this is the burr block um, we teach the complete veneer crown that's what we start with the full gold crown then we move on to the metal ceramic crowns for anterior and posterior teeth then you'll teach the students the all ceramic crown prep and after thanksgiving we move into the fixed partial dentures or bridge work 
As far as provisionals go, we teach many different methods, indirect and direct techniques. I would say the students spend most of the time learning how to use integrity, and we also use the jet acrylic. We teach them several um, preformed, prefabricated crown forms, just so as they do rotate into these community health centers, they should have a working knowledge of how to use pretty much anything they encounter, or at least know what questions to ask in order to achieve the proper provisional. They also will fabricate a full arch custom tray and then they use that to make the PVS final impression. This translates into kind of the little but major project we have throughout the semester, which is the wax up and delivery of one complete veneer crown. So the student will take that master impression and it's sent to the lab to be poured up in dye stone, gets returned to them so they learn how to do the dye trim. They'll apply the dye spacer and wax up their first crown. Then we return it to be cast and then the students will receive the cast crown back, they'll finish, polish, seat it on the master cast, and then they'll fit it in the type of aunt's mouth and cement it with glass ionomer. So for them, it's at least somewhat realistic so they can kind of see how we go through this process. It makes it for an easier transition into clinic. And the last component to the fixed process module is the CAD CAM technology. Currently we're using the CIRAC system and this is where the students will spray the cast with the powder, scan it into the computer and they actually design and mill two single unit crowns and they have the opportunity if they want to scan and mill several inlays and onlays as well. So it's really a pretty neat part of the curriculum that we added about three years ago. It's relatively new <coughs> and if there are cases in the clinic that are appropriate for a CIRAC crown, the students will be able to also utilize that technology in the clinic. Okay, so another course that runs during the fall semester for the D2s is our Operative 2 module. The main goal with Operative 2 is just to reinforce the skills used as the D1, so they're constantly practicing their operative procedures every week, and we do introduce some more advanced coursework. We put the inlay and onlay coursework and the ceramic veneers into this class. I know technically they should probably go into fixed pros, but they're currently loaded into the Operative 2 module, and we do a lot of advanced anterior composites as well. So large class 4 fractures, diastema closure, and this smile design project, we order um, crooked and malaligned teeth, and they have to cut them all back and rebuild them with composite veneers. So it's a really great module, and it kind of reinforces everything they learned as a D1 and takes them the next step further. So by the end of D2, year in the fall, the students will have restored 55 amalgam surfaces and 125 composite surfaces at least. That's the minimum requirement. So they really do quite a few projects in the simulation clinic. And here's just some examples of the ideal preparations they're taught for the advanced buildups. Endodontics is Right now, it's a two-week course in the Sim Clinic, and it's given dur during October right now. I mean, that's always subject to change. But with Endo, we aim to have 15 to 20 canals completed um, by each student, and we have special typodonts that you can mount the extracted teeth into, and those go into the mannequin, and the excuse me, the students will use rubber dam to do pretty much all of the endo procedures, so they're a lot more competent than just holding it in, in their hand the whole time. We're using rotary instrumentation and currently teaching the warm vertical condensation technique for the obturation. Complete Dentures is another two-week course, and we go through clinical and laboratory skills necessary to make a high-quality complete denture. And there are several projects we run through in this course. So the students begin, we give them a um, preliminary impression. From that, they'll make custom trays. Then we give them the master cast, which they'll mount to the articulator, fabricate the record base and wax rims, set the teeth on the upper and lower arches, 
complete festooning, and then we send one arch to be processed. So the students get the one arch back um, a couple months later, and they finish and polish, and then the great tragedy, they have to take a hammer to it and break their denture so that they're actually able to learn how to repair it which for them is very dramatic that day in the lab, but it's really very useful um, throughout their third and fourth year or in practice. I mean, they'll know how to repair a denture, so it's, it's a very memorable experience. <laughs> Okay, well this brings us to the holiday break and something that's become an annual tradition at the Arizona School of Dentistry is our holiday talent show. So the students always recruit a few faculty to serve as the judges and it's a charity event, so they charge a small fee for the tickets and additional donations are accepted. But the students, they actually have a couple bands and they write their own music. This band in the center was kind of the highlighted event for the evening. Um, we also have guitar players, singers, and they raised over $700 this year um, for a local homeless shelter. So that was a really fun evening. And then there'll be a short winter break, at least for the faculty. The students do return for some didactic coursework December, January, and they'll have the university break. Which brings us back around to the spring. So kind of rounding out the year for the D2s, we have the one week course um, for implant dentistry. And this is really dependent on which implant company we use. So it's subject to change, but currently we're doing a lot of really neat projects. We do a simulated implant placement. The little cast on the left is much softer. It's more similar to the maxillary bone rather than a, a stone model. And they'll, they'll get to place four implants into that. Then we do the implant over denture where they fit a denture to the implants already placed. And that's really fun. We also do a full arch final impression with the impression coping. They then have to pour up the soft tissue master cast using the lab analog and make a provisional on that cast using the abutment analog. So they've been exposed to all those procedures, at least in the lab, so the terminology and the different implant parts will make a lot more sense when they do get to the clinical setting. Removable partial dentures is the last kind of big class for the spring. It's about four weeks long and most of this class we spend time teaching the design principles for your different edentulous arches, the different Kennedy classifications. So we design eight RPDs and then there's a master project which is actually completed in the mannequin. So we'll take out certain teeth from the typodont so the typodont becomes partially edentulous. The students will do the rest seat preps and guiding planes, any of the necessary enamelplasty in the mouth. They'll make their final full arch impressions and then do the laboratory RX for the design. And in addition, the students have to write the lab prescriptions for all nine designs. So we're trying to work on the communication skills with other dental professionals. And these are some of the RPD projects that we're currently doing. Pediatric dentistry is currently a one week course and a lot of it is actually spent in lecture reviewing behavioral management issues and other topics. In the sim clinic though, we do have special pedo typodonts and we'll do the stainless steel crowns, the traditional class one, class two preps. We have a special little um, typodont tooth, it's tooth B I believe, that they'll do a pulpotomy and build up and stainless steel crown on. So it's really a pretty fun lab projects for that class. So that's pretty much the SIM clinic. I have just a couple slides I wanted to introduce to everyone in the audience regarding the clinical orientation module. This would be another way of getting involved with the dental school that isn't really mannequin based. So the clinical orientation is ongoing throughout the second year. On average, we'll have this course running one or two days per week, sometimes half days here and there. The students are divided into small groups. So for this class, you're going to have six or 12 students or somewhere in there that you're working with. And these are initial experiences working in the clinical setting that would be related to diagnostic, preventative, or anesthesia related procedures from student to student. 
Radiology ha is a little bit lengthier part of clinic orientation. This is 13 hours per student, and they'll learn all of the techniques on these special Dexter heads. So Dexter gets all the radiation exposure as the students are working on their technique. And then they do a final exam on each other where they have to place the XCP holders and take a full mouth series on each other. Local anesthesia is also a little bit longer of a module, and so there are several times where the students have to pair up and be each other's guinea pig, and we need faculty to supervise that. So that would be concepts and techniques related to administration and management of anesthesia. And this past spring, we just had the oral cancer walk in Phoenix, and again, this was part of the dentistry in the community module. Any of the dentistry in the community projects that the students develop that involve patient care, whether it's patient screening or anything like that, will need a faculty dentist to supervise. So this is, again, a great way for you to get involved outside in the community with the students. And so then right around this time of year, April or May, the second year students will take the preclinical competency exams and move on to clinic and become a D3. And then we'll have the D1 students transitioning back into the SIM clinic starting over with operative one. So um, another year in the SIM clinic begins. And so I just wanted to thank you for your attention. It's very rewarding working in the SIM clinic, and I hope that this has given you a glimpse into ways that you'll be able to help and get involved here. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Just a little addition. Uh, to work with Allison in the SIM clinic, I, I had a chance to do that, and there isn't anybody better to work with them for, so. Um, you know, <laughs> use that as you, as you may. The other thing I'd like to say is having done that and worked in the SIM clinic and, and done the, uh, the human sciences and that, uh, even though I had to retire from dentistry, I would have to say that I'm a better dentist now having gone through that than I was uh, having practiced. So if, if you would take the opportunity to contribute and, and go provide your expertise and learn, you'll actually improve your dentistry if, if you come join this, uh, this endeavor. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Dale, also for your presentations. I almost feel like the, that guy that gets you to buy a condo in Vegas, you know, we pull you in, we feed you, and then we go, okay, now, who wants to buy? Um, in your, in your material here, uh, one of the reasons that we wanted to host this evening for you is so that you get a better feeling of what the curriculum and the school is going to look like. And as part of that, um, Allison alluded to the numbers of faculty that we're going to need here in Kirksville. So um, if you have any material that you would like to share uh, for the D1 in your packet, you've got the format in there so that if you uh, want to go ahead and put some things together and then email them to Dale, that would be awesome if you would want to do that. So we want you to take that away with you. The other thing in there is a, a profile sheet. Some of you may have filled this out, uh, I think it was a year ago, that in November of 2011, some of you attended a meeting with Dr. Cottom and um, may have done this, but because you're here this evening, we recognize that you're probably pretty interested in pursuing this a little bit further. So from that point of view, we want to make sure that we can get a hold of you so that as things progress, we can kind of bring you into the fold and get you started in the, the next step of teaching for our, our school. So, there is a profile sheet in there if you want to fill that out this evening. We have operators standing by in the back, actually. It's Melissa and <laughs> Katie. Um, and they will take that information from you. Um, the other thing that is really critical to us is understanding what's going to work best for you. 
probably as you went, as Allison went through some of these slides, you were going like, ooh, ooh, I want to do that. Oh, that's my, that's what I really like to do. Or that was something that I really liked in school. You know, that's kind of the thing that uh, we're looking for is people who are, are interested. Maybe it's in the anesthesia clinic. Maybe it's in the Prost lab, whatever. But this form is kind of a survey that if you would just take a few seconds before you leave, fill it out, and maybe delineate where you see yourself in one of those situations in one of those labs or clinics. So if you would do that and leave it with the ladies in the back, we would appreciate that. The next form is a faculty agreement form. And again, some of you may have filled these out previously, but we would need to collect these. But it is basically your confirmation that you're interested in teaching with us. You would like to pursue this further. So we would appreciate if you would go ahead and sign that. And it, you're not you know, paying the mortgage on my house or anything, I promise. But if you look down here through uh, the fine print, it does say that you would be working somewhere within the D1, D2 preclinical simulation laboratory or in the clinical orientation radiology, one of those aspects. And then you just print and sign your name. And um, if you could leave that with the ladies in the back. And then finally, um, we, we do want to know who you are and what your uh, qualifications are. I know we've got a lot of gems out there in terms of teachers and uh, we do need to have some documentation of what your background is. In your material there's also a sample curriculum vitae that ATSU uses for um, basically all of their teaching faculty. So it gives you somewhat of a template to use um, as we kind of move down this, this pathway. Um, if you'd like, we can email uh, an electronic copy to you so you can just kind of plug things in that might make it a little bit easier. And both Melissa and Katie can give you more information on that. But um, I'm very excited about having you here. It's great to kind of get a, a sense of who's interested and, and what direction uh, you would like to go. So if you can help us with that, that would be great. So I don't know, Chris, do you have any, you want to take questions? Or? Yeah, I, I just would like to thank you guys again for showing up tonight. Um, we're going to stick around for a while. If you have any questions you want to ask us one-on-one, -on -one, we'll talk with you. Um, you know, we'll be here, so just let us know if you want to discuss anything further. Uh, we do appreciate the support that members of Kirksville have shown us individually and within groups within Kirksville. I know there are uh, group practices that have, uh, have supported the school. There are individuals that have supported the school. Um, all of us have been out in community events and received a lot of support, so it's really encouraging that Kirksville has been so supportive. So we'd like to thank you for that, and please pass our appreciation on to your colleagues. Um, so we can either meet with you all individually, one-on-one, -on -one, if you like, or if you have uh, Dr. McManus. Before you give the benediction, I, would, I don't want the evening to, to pass without being explicit. Is there a way to pull up the first set of drawings? I'm thinking of the site plan. For the, for the building? Yeah. Not the building itself, but the site plan for the building. <laughs> that one, that right there. I, I didn't want the evening to pass without explicitly pointing out the, the larger building that's labeled iPads or iPads is our building, interdisciplinary building. But I wanted to make clear that the other building you see there is the uh, Northeast Missouri health clinic building that they're going to open in what, Dr. Herp's about two weeks? Um, the 18th, next Thursday. So less than two weeks. Good thing we got the parking lot down today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a, a f symbolic of the partnership that ATSU has with, uh, with the community uh, health centers across the state. It's also a physical manifestation of ATSU's mission to help serve the underserved. And uh, I think, uh, as I recall, the ground floor is uh, women's health and pediatrics, and the, upper, the entire upper floor is going to be uh, Dr. Herpes's uh, playground with uh, the dental program. And uh, we intend 
to have a close working relationship with the community health center not only here but in St. Louis where we're opening the year three and year four clinics and uh, a lot of that orientation uh, that you saw between D2 and the D3s we're you know we will we need to work out the details but you know some of that's going to occur in this clinic so it's truly a partnership and I didn't want didn't want the evening to pass without acknowledging that partnership and how important it is to the overall success of this uh, new dental school. The only other thing is I like to embarrass uh, Dr. Halliday by noting that in his prior position he retired as a two-star admiral. So. Uh, I'm always careful not to give him a hard time because uh, he knows people who know SEAL Team 6. So. It's okay, Michael, you're in good with me. So it's all right. Um, well, once again, thanks for being here. We're going to stick around and feel free to come over and talk with us if you like. And, you know, we realize you all may have families to get home to or things to get home to, so we understand if you need to leave. but. Uh, certainly grab a sandwich on your way out too if you need to take off. But we'll be here, so thanks for coming, and it's good to see you guys.